As we come to consider once again Asher Norman's book, 26 Reasons Why Jews Don't Believe in Jesus, I want to look at some of his arguments that fall under the basic category of his disbelief in the New Testament. A whole series of arguments, reasons why the Christian Bible is not credible. He's focused already upon the Apostle Paul, but now he includes the entire New Testament scripture as being that which is incredible, that which is not believable. He claims that the New Testament is simply the product of the Christian community, that the New Testament is not inspired, the New Testament is not the Word of God, the New Testament is simply giving us a theology that evolved through the community of believers in Jesus of Christ, this little sect uh, that followed Jesus in the years after Jesus was dead. Here's this sect now that develops a creed, develops a theology, and the New Testament is the product of that Christian community who themselves had no first-hand knowledge of any history of Jesus. He argues, for instance, that the epistles were written very late uh, in the first century, and the gospels were written in the second century, so denying that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, were the gospel writers. Their names were associated with this, gospels written sometime in the second century. Now, he assumes those statements to be fact. No proof, no arguments and evidence. He simply makes the assumption that the gospel writers, second century, epistles, late first century, and therefore whoever it is that wrote these letters had no first-hand knowledge of the historical events of Jesus Christ. Now, I would say just uh, from a cursory uh, statement here that any first-year seminary student, any first-year seminary student at an orthodox conservative seminary, uh, knows the answers to these questions, the answers to these objections concerning the date and the authorship. We have classes in biblical introduction uh, that deals with the credible proofs uh, of authorship, of integrity, of unity, of date of the books, and uh, it is easily verifiable that these claims concerning the date of the Gospels and the Epistles uh, that Norman is suggesting are absolutely false. I'm not going to go into all of those arguments. We have whole classes, I say, that deal with the issues of biblical introduction. But the evidence is that the gospel writers were written, that the gospel books, I should say, were written by those that purported to write them, that Matthew and Mark and Luke and John were the writers, that the epistles were written by the apostles and so forth. Those that had actual eyewitness representation, eyewitness uh, knowledge of the events of the life and the death the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, he argues that all the eyewitness statements uh, are simply literary forgeries to give the appearance of credibility. He identifies various what he believes to be inconsistencies uh, in the gospel writers to prove that these uh, writers did not have any first-hand knowledge. He argues, for instance, that when you look at the list of the disciples' names, inconsistencies, there are different names between Matthew and Luke and Mark, uh, different names are given. So therefore, uh, he sees that to be an inconsistency. He sees that to be evidence of uh, evidence of error, what have you. Never crosses his mind. It never crosses his mind that these disciples had different names, had more than one name. I have names. Some people call me Mike. Some people call me Barrett. And in different context and different references. I may be one of those two, but I'm the same person. So he fails to realize that the different names that are used, Simon, Peter, Labius, Judas, are the same individual given a different name. Easy explanation if I want to see that a harmonization indeed uh, is possible. He looks at the different details of the birth narrative, of the betrayal, of the Passion Week that the Gospel writers give and say, you see, they're confused. They're confused because they don't all say exactly the same thing. But again, we have to understand. We have to understand that if we have the notion that God's Word is consistent, 
if we have the notion and the presupposition that God's word is infallible, that all of these apparent inconsistencies have an explanation. If I don't have that presupposition, I'm never going to seek to have any kind of a harmonization. Certainly we have different approaches in the Gospels. That's why we have four Gospels instead of one. Each of the Gospel writers had a different perspective, a different theme. And so what they said and how they selected the history was geared to the development and the establishing of that theme, of that purpose, of that theological message that they had to set forth. Many, many things. John tells us that if they wrote everything about Christ, there wouldn't be enough writing material in the world to contain it all. So they're all selected. And the fact that they selected different issues and sometimes put them in a different focus, a different spotlight, is not evidence of error, is not evidence of inconsistencies, but rather it is the evidence that they were using historical fact as a foundation for the truth, the message that they were setting forth. They are complementary, not contradictory. Be like if I wrote a letter, you know, if I wrote a letter uh, to my dad and I told my dad, you know, I, I, I got in the car, I got in the car and went to the store. And when I was coming back from the woods, the truck ran out of gas. I made reference to a car. I made reference to a truck. Norman would look at that and say there were two different people riding that. There were two different. There's a contradiction there. Is it a car? Is it a truck? would never cross his mind that I had both, that I had both a car and a truck. Now that's absurd example, but that's exactly how he's approaching, how the critics approach the, what they view to be the inconsistencies uh, and the discrepancies of the scripture. Give it a chance, give it a chance. If I believe it to be the inspired word of God, harmonization is possible. So I argue indeed, again, on the basis of my presupposition. The Bible is the Word of God, that the New Testament is inspired. It is a credible, it is the most believable witness that we have of truth. It is God's truth that must be believed.